the Puritans made the distinction between assurance of the gospel and assurance of faith. Now, assurance of the gospel is of the essence of faith, that you really believe in the gospel, that it is true. But then there is assurance of faith. The question is, do I really believe? I have no doubt about the gospel, but do I really believe? And the Puritans, in their genius, because they developed their theology, not so much just from the study, but from dealing pastorally with the people, they began to distinguish between the two, that it is possible for one to have the assurance of the gospel, but have some doubt about his faith. Assurance of faith is reflexive. You are asking yourself. You are not questioning the gospel. And so it is possible for one who has true faith in the gospel, yet has doubts about his faith and he has problems of assurance it should not be but it does happen and our confession of faith uh, uh, the westminster of the presbyterians the savoy of the congregationalists and the 1689 of the baptist they all have this distinction between assurance of salvation assurance of the gospel rather and assurance of faith so Assurance of faith is not of the essence of saving faith. Uh, Nicholas Robles, paano uh, ang tao na pinanganak na tumanda na lang, pero baby pa rin sa physical, ganun pa rin. Hindi siya lumalaki at hindi marunong magsalita, pero 60 years old na. Hey, you're talking of the retarded, and uh, that's where we apply the issue of uh, what happens to a child uh, with such mental deformity. And my answer to that is not to be dogmatic, but to depend upon the mercy of God. Uh, to say that the child is innocent, therefore he's going to heaven is unbiblical because even children are sinners. And so you cannot just jump to the conclusion they're going to heaven because they're innocent. But then there is the expressed mercy of God upon upon the help, including those who cannot think or decide for themselves. And that's clear in Proverbs. That's clear in Jonah. The very last verse of Jonah, chapter 4, speaks of God's mercy to those who do not know the right from their, their right from their left, an expression that pertains to uh, unintelligent children. <clears throat> so uh, that's, that would be my answer. To depend upon the mercy of God and not to be dogmatic. Other questions? Any question on euthanasia? You've been asking questions that have nothing to do with euthanasia. Join, is it ethically justifiable to let a person dying in the hospital if the reason is economically unable to sustain the hospital and medication expenses by the family after all in their efforts? Well, as I said, this is where government should take responsibility because there are really situations where uh, the family is economically unable. And that's where government should take over. Uh, uh, I, I believe that in many medical cases, it should be the private and family decisions to govern. But in cases of this extreme where one is dying and the family is unable to support, uh, that's where government comes in. And also charity of others. But pure economic reasons, I said, is not enough to justify euthanasia. Joshua from Christ Heritage, if someone is pronounced brain dead, is it still euthanasia if it is decided for them to be taken off life support? Uh, it's not just brain dead, but dying. There must be the determination by the medical uh, personnel, by the medical authority, the one in oversight, that the person is dying. And by dying, it means that his life is ebbing away they just cannot determine, of course, the date or uh, exact hour, but that it is ebbing away. And when that is the case, then it is right 
that there should be a decision to let die rather than just keep sustaining the breathing by respirator. Other questions? 